Hello everyone, and here's a tutorial for Unreal Engine 5, and we're getting started with geometry scripting. Okay, actually before you start, you want to make sure you have the plugin installed. So if you go to Edit, Plugins, you're going to look for Geometry Scripting. And you'll see Geometry Script, you're going to enable that, and then once that's enabled, it'll ask you to restart, and you'll just restart now, and every stuff. So I already have a folder here under content called Ge Geometry Scripts and you're going to want to go create your own folder there and then you're going to create a blueprint class. We're going to say dynamic mesh generator wow. actor, dynamic mesh actor. And once we have that, we'll call this BP, I don't know, generate islands since my other one is island generator. So don't want to copy that. <laughs> Okay, so now we've got our little blueprint class. You want to delete those. We're going to create a new function. I'm going to call this, I don't know, create islands. Compile that. Pull that off of the begin play. Sweet. So before we get started, you're going to notice that, oh, we got a little dynamic mesh component here. We're going to drag that down. We're going to want to get dynamic mesh, which is like a built-in thing. Actually, it's options for dynamic mesh blueprints. So now that we're caught back up, let us move forward. So we're going to save this as a reference. So you want to promote that to a variable. And we're going to call this our dynamic mesh. Dyn Dyn mesh, dynamic mesh. Cool. And since we're calling this function potentially multiple times, we're going to want to do... Oh my gosh. We're going to want to reset it and we're going to want to clear our variables. Um, speaking of variables, let's create an array of vectors for small locations. And to create that, you'll click on it, swing on top right, and switch it to an array. Grab that array, and then you're going to clear it, even though presently there's nothing in it. There will be after we do this, and you're going to want to clear it each time. All right, after that, we're going to add a for loop. We're going to loop through several times. Uh, how about, I don't know, let's do eight this time, which is actually nine because we're starting at zero. So now that we've got that, what we want to do is append a cone, which will be our island base shape since we're keeping it simple. You want to get our dynamic mesh reference, plug that in there, slide this over here. So this will just spawn eight of these. What we need to do now is transform them. So to do that, we're going to use our spawn locations array and we're going to get random units in a range, like a spawn distance. And so to use a random variable, we're going to create one. To use a random, random variable, you must create it because it doesn't exist yet. All right, we'll call it seed. It will be type something random in stream. There we go and make sure it's not an array. So swap that out. We'll get our random seed. Use that to generate a random unit vector from stream. And if you guys know about unit vectors, it's kind of just giving us a direction, which we will then multiply. Um, a distance. So this will be our max spawn distance. And so we actually want to float. So let's create a float. Uh, max spawn distance. Plug that into there. That'll convert because Unreal Engine 5 has got that cool new feature. 
So what should our max spawn distance be? Let's just put like, I don't know, 420 blaze it for now. Probably be closer to 500, but that'll be based on mostly our base radius. Let's say like this is 500. Let's say our top radius is 300. That'll kind of give you the slope if you know what I'm saying. I don't know what I'm saying. From here, we're going to want to make this a transform. And plug that back into here. That'll give us our spawn location. And that's looking pretty good. Let's test this. First of all, that will not give us our spawn location. We want to add to there. And I believe what we actually want to do is go like this, grab from our spawn locations, we're adding to it. After that, we take that array, which you could also grab a separate version of it. We're gonna say get, let's get a copy. The copy we were getting is this one. It's not the best practice, but it's not terrible. And then we'll split these variable or vectors so we can get our respective X and Y locations. So I don't believe that the ground is actually at zero. I think it might be closer to something like minus 50. So I'm just gonna put minus 25 to be safe. Maybe it's maybe 100. Uh, let's test it. Did I actually put max distance? I did not, oh, I did. Oop. Actually, before we test it, we have to put it into the map. That would be useful. So I already have one from the last video. I'm gonna pull that off to the side, but you're gonna go grab your blueprint and place it in the map. Now let's test that. Okay, cool. So we see our cones, they're mashed together. You could call that a little island maybe. And if you want, you can make this much bigger. But for now, this is what we're working with. So let's do a little modifications to our mesh. This is just kind of a get starting guide, but you're going to want to do a few things just to kind of spice it up and just kind of show you around what you can do. So let's apply some noise. We're going to do Perlin noise, which just kind of modifies the vert vertex positions. Go to options. We'll drag that off. We'll break. Break or make, it says make, but we're breaking in reverse. We're making. We're making and breaking and baking. I don't know. Anyway, magnitude is how like high the peaks and valleys are of the Perlin noise and frequency is how often it is. So let's just try like 20 and keep the, what we got there. Hit play, take a look. Yeah. Cool, so we have some variation in the mesh, that's nice. My mouse just spazzed, that was cool. After that, you're gonna wanna do apply mesh solidify. And then after that, set mesh UVs, and we're gonna do a planar projection. Cool. So this will project UVs up from above, but we gotta set the location. So we're going to say, okay, do it from, or not above. We're going to set the scale and oh, not a hundred, do 10 each. Could do a hundred, test it. So let's check that. Load it back in. Do, 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 do. Cool. Maybe we do want to actually scale up the UVs because that's pretty intense. If you're making a bigger island, you're going to want to scale that up so it's not so, you know, scaled. <laughs> um, so if you want there to be colliders, you're going to want to go to your blueprint and in your detail section, go down to collision. You're going to say use complex collision as simple and then turn on enable complex collision. So we hit play now. And we should be able to run on it. And yes, we can. 
So that's the basics of geometry scripting and getting started in Unreal Engine 5 with it. Uh, you can do a lot of cool things with it. I'm still kind of experimenting with it right now, working on some things with procedural island generation and different terrain features. Um, I hope that this video has helped you and you get to make some cool stuff. As always, like, subscribe, follow, whatever, ring some bells or something. I don't really care about bells, dude. Just make cool shit and have fun. Peace.